Beautiful. Oh. To do Pythagorean theorem, uh, the first thing you need to learn is that Pythagorean theorem has to do with triangles. And it also has to do with right angle triangles. What a right angle triangle means is that somewhere in the triangle, you should see this, like a little box written into one of the corners, where it comes at a perfect angle that would make like a square almost, right? So if you think about walls, like that makes a perfect square corner there. That's a 90 degree angle. On almost every triangle you get, there's going to be a 90 degree somewhere on it, especially in this unit. We're not going to be tricking you with crazy triangles too often. So this will be a standard triangle you look at. On those triangles, we have some terminology that you need to know. The first one, which is the more important one, is the term hypotenuse. Heard that term before a couple yeah. times? Who remembers what a hypotenuse is? Yeah, Rachel. Perfect. It's the longest edge. So looking at the triangle, you can usually identify it right away because it typically looks longer. But sometimes if you're looking at a triangle, they all look the same. And Rachel pointed out something smart was that if you look directly across from the 90 degree, so you look across, that'll always tell you where the hypotenuse is, the longest side. The other two sides, which connect to create the 90 degree, so these two sides right here, don't have any particular name. We just call them legs. In the future, in Math 10C, Math 10.3, either one you go to, they will have different names. So you will start naming them properly. But for now, we just call them legs, and we're good with that. Awesome. If you look at the triangle right beside it, you'll notice, again, you have a 90-degree triangle because there's a 90 right there. The hypotenuse is the longest side, which in this triangle, it's a little easier to see which side is the longest, but it does happen to be directly across from the 90. And the other two sides are just called legs. Beautiful. With Pythagorean theorem, we're going to label our triangles with three different letters. We're going to label them A, B, and C. A and B will be the legs. The hypotenuse will be C. So if you look up at these previous question, I would say hypotenuse is C. And the legs, A and B, it doesn't matter which one you call which. I'm just going to say this one's A, this one's B. If you reversed it, it doesn't make a difference. Okay, The legs, there's nothing special with them. Hypotenuse has to be C, though. That does matter. Pythagorean theorem is this right here. It says that if you square one side plus you square the other side, it should equal the longest side, the hypotenuse. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen that before? Yeah. Those of you who kind of remember Pythagorean theorem, are like, yeah, that's kind of normal for us. Um, this version of it, let me just make sure. Yeah. This version of the. Pythagorean theorem is like the traditional version. It's the one you'll always see. It's also the one that will be given to you in math 10. It's the better one for when you want to calculate the hypotenuse, the longest side. The reason why it's the better one for finding the hypotenuse is because if you look at this, you have the hypotenuse all by itself, while the other side has two things. It has the legs. So if you ever need to calculate the hypotenuse, this is the easier one to use. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Actually using the formula, though, is a little bit different, so we'll try it. We have example one here. Determine the length of the missing side, round to the nearest tenth if necessary. First thing I do, make sure you have a 90-degree triangle. Is this first question a 90-degree triangle? Yeah, and they even tell you, right, by putting that little thing in the corner. That tells you it's 90. Second thing I do is I label my triangle A, B, and C. Only one of them really matters. C. C has to be the hypotenuse. In our case, the hypotenuse is right there. Well, I'll do a different color. That's pretty light. I know that's the hypotenuse because it's the longest side. Like visually looking at it, I can kind of tell it's the longest side. It's also across from the 90, which means it has to be C. Yeah, so how I look at it is B is based, A is almost like edge, yeah. and C is... Across? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, as long as you have a system that works for you. Like a lot of people can just visually 
are really good at looking at it and seeing it. Personally, I'm not. I figure it out by looking across from the 90. And I draw a little arrow for myself. I think that's my system. As long as you have a system that always gets the hypotenuse right, you're good. The other two sides, it doesn't matter which one you call A, doesn't matter which one you call B. I just would usually go A over here, B down here. If you reversed it, it wouldn't make a difference. Awesome. Now that you've labeled your sides, you can figure out A equals 5, B equals 12. I'm going to change that to blue. And C, we don't know. In math, when they give you equations and you're trying to find something, you should always have one thing you need to find out and they give you all the other information. And, you know, in math then it's kind of easy to be like, yeah, okay, I see what these two things are. But this idea of what do I know and what do I want to know becomes really important once you get into the higher grades because it comes harder to figure out what are they really asking me. Math 9, it's kind of straightforward. So this habit of like writing things out like that, this is what I know, this is what I want to know, just kind of carries forward. It's a good, good habit to build. Once we do that, we can go to our Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem said that a squared plus b squared would equal c squared. And we can change our letters to be the numbers. So instead of saying a squared, I'm going to go bracket, 5, bracket, and then squared. So notice that I put brackets around it because we know brackets mean that the whole base is inside the brackets. If you ever have negative numbers, that really matters. Kind of a rule of thumb in math, if you're substituting something for a letter, put brackets. Make it safe. Plus... Our B value is 12 squared equals our C value, which we don't know. So we're just going to leave it as C squared. Yep. And you just times them together. Yep. So you're just going to square them and add them. So once you've subbed everything in... <coughs> One side of the equal sign has all the numbers. That means we can calculate what that actually equals. If you're good with your calculator, you can put it all in your calculator once, sweet, do that. Um, if you're not so strong with your calculator, you can break it into chunks. So 5 squared equals 25 plus 12 squared, which is 144, should equal C squared. Now that you've done the squaring, you can do the adding. So 25 plus 40, 144 is 169, which equals C squared. Now I've done a lot of Pythagorean here um, because it just literally carries on for the rest of your life in math. So I've seen it a lot. <laughs> I get a lot of people who leave that as their answer. And they say 169 is the answer. I like to just use a little bit of logic to check if my answer makes sense. So if you looked at your triangle right now, and you said, okay, one side is 5, one side is 12, the other side is 169. That seems a little ridiculous, right? Like that's way too big. It's astronomically huge compared to the other two numbers. That's a sign that you either did something wrong or you're not done the question. In this case, we're not done the question yet. Because we have 169 equals C squared, not equals C. So our job is to get rid of the square. We learned yesterday that the opposite of a square is a square root. So we need to square root both things to figure out that 13 equals C. And that's your answer. So the hypotenuse to that question is 13. Now that question is like an anomaly, meaning that it's kind of rare that you got all whole numbers. That doesn't happen very often. It's called a Pythagorean triple. Uh, you don't need to know that. 
<coughs> but it's rare to get three whole numbers. It doesn't happen often. Typically, you're going to get decimals or something crazy like that. Awesome. Um, we're going to do B in chunks. So I'm going to let you do a chunk, then I'll show you, then you do a chunk, then I'll show you, and so on and so forth. So the first thing I want you to do is label triangle B. Label A, B, C. If you labeled your triangle, that was your only job right now, C is the important one for us. This is C. That's the hypotenuse. A and B don't matter. I just do this one as A, this one as B. Cool. Technically, you don't need to do the next step, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm just going to write on the side A equals 51.9, B equals 98.7, and C equals question mark. So I'm trying to figure out what C is. I do that from grade 9 to grade 12. Right, so if you ever have math with me again, you'll probably see me write things like that on the side of my notes all the time. Write what I know, write what I want to know. It's useful. Awesome. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I want you to try to properly substitute the numbers in for the letters. Okay, so all I want to see is you substituting those letters to become numbers. You don't actually have to calculate them yet. So if we're looking at Pythagorean theorem and I'm changing letters to be numbers, I always use brackets. A equaled 51.9, so I go bracket 51.9 squared. B equaled 98.7, so I have that in brackets, and then I put squared. And I didn't know what C was, so I left it as C. It's wise to show your work. If I was marking a test and this was a written question, I'd give you a half mark just for the end of that. Because you've at least showed me... I know what's going on. And then maybe you make a calculation and that happens, right? Like things happen. But if you do this, it's getting you some marks just for showing the work. So always try to show as much work as you possibly can. The next step I want you to try to do is figure out what this side of the equal sign equals. You can break it in separately or you can do it all once. It's your choice. But try to figure out what that side of the equal sign should equal. So... Okay. If you did the squaring properly, on the left side, you should end up with 12,900, oh, sorry, 435. And then equals C squared. Now, you might have done it into two different parts, which is fine. But then remember, you have to add those numbers together. Right? Awesome. The next step is square rooting, which I think a lot of us don't know where that is on our calculator. On your calculator, it's typically a smaller button. Like, it's not actually a button. It's the writing above the button. You should look for the square root symbol. And to actually use those little tiny symbols that are in a different color, there's typically a button on your calculator that says second. It's typically in the top left-hand corner. If I take someone's, when you square root 12,435.3, you end up getting an irrational number. Irrational numbers mean they go on forever, right? So that's a decimal that never stops and it never repeats. On a question like this, it'll tell you what to round to. In this case, it told you round to the nearest tenth. Tenth is the first decimal place. So when my answer is 111.5136763, if I was to round that to the nearest tenth, I want one decimal place to be kept. That'd be the five. So I look to the number to the right of it. If it's five or bigger, then I change the tenth to be a larger number. If it's four or lower, I leave it the way it is. In this case, it would be 111.5.
Awesome. How do people feel like they got that? Or at least now they feel a little more confident with their calculator. Uh, I probably give it a, give it to you the first few times, right? It's one of those things that like we'll talk about it, and I'd be like, I'd probably circle it, but I'd still give you the mark. And then later in the year, probably not so much. It go it starts to like lean in a little bit more, and the expectations change. So we'll work on it. Yeah, I know on your PAT or final exams after starting grade nine. So any final exam or any unit test in grade 10, 11, 12, you wouldn't get the mark. So it's time we, we start fixing this. Yeah. And if you're ever confused about rounding, just ask, because it's something we can fix quickly. Sure. That'd be 8.7. Yeah. Yeah. If it says nearest 10th, then yeah. You can. Okay. That's two examples on how to find the hypotenuse. That's the longest side of a triangle. We're now going to do examples on how to find one of the missing legs. That's one of the two other sides. You need something? Back there. <coughs> when doing that, we use a different version of Pythagorean theorem. So all they did, I'll show you how they did it. Pythagorean theorem is this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you want to find one of the legs, then you just need to move b squared to the other side. We do that by subtracting. We'll do more algebra in the future. But we subtract something to move it to the other side. And that gives me my new formula of a squared equals c squared minus b squared. That means if you want to find a missing leg, you take the hypotenuse and subtract the other leg that you know. Yeah. So you just have to subtract. Like, it's just like the other one, but... But subtraction. They give you the hypotenuse. But exactly. It's the exact same thing except with subtraction, and you have to have the bigger number minus the smaller number. Yeah. So it's always hypotenuse first, other leg second. So if you're looking at these triangles right here, the first thing you always do is make sure it's a 90 degree. It is. Second thing is to label your triangle. Labeling my triangle, the biggest side is always C. The other two sides don't really matter. I'm going to call my missing side A because that's what I'm used to. So I say that's A, that's B. And I think it's a wise habit to write on the side of your page, what you know and what you want to know. So I know B equals 24. I know C equals 40. And I want to know what A is. That allows me to do my other formula, which has A already by itself. So if you look, this formula now up here would be perfect to use because I'm looking for one of my legs. We write it out. So Pythagorean theorem says a squared equals c squared minus b squared. Yep. So a squared equals c squared minus b squared. And then I substitute my values in for my letters. So I'm going to change this to be a squared equals 40 squared minus 24 squared. That's half a mark right there, even if you just got to there and screwed up the rest of the way. If you use B, it would be B squared. Yep. Yep. I'm going to break it into chunks because I think it's wise. So A squared equals 1,600, pretty sure. 1,600 minus 24 squared, which is 576. That means A squared equals... 10,024. And a lot of people get to that spot and stop. Remember that your answer should make kind of logical sense. 
I have legs of 40 and 24, and then 1,024. That does not make sense. That's way too big. That will hopefully remind you that the last step of Pythagorean theorem is always to square root both sides so that A is now by itself because the square root and the square would cancel each other out. And then the square root of 1,024, I believe, is a nice round number of 32. That means the second leg to my triangle would be 32. All right, I want you to try B. So give it a shot on your own. I'll put the answer up on the board so you can check your work and see if you're right or wrong. If you look at B, so the second one, I've put all the work up on the board now. First thing, label the triangle. C has to be the long side. I like to make A my missing side. It really doesn't matter though. As long as you set it up so that it's C squared minus the other leg that you know squared. Uh, we were talking like a rule of thumb of when you add, when you subtract. If you know your hypotenuse, you're subtracting. If you want to know your hypotenuse, you're adding. So if you're really lost on how to figure out which one to use, that's how you know. When you did that, you should have got to 2043.43. If you square rooted it, you got 45.2. It, it went on longer than that, but we rounded it to be 0.2. Pardon? Pardon? I got the same thing as in there, but then, like, it's because we did one Oh, you got a different answer for we your got, middle one? Uh, 44 point something. Yeah. So Just be very careful, especially putting things in, putting things into your calculator. If you mess up one digit, it messes everything up. So be very careful when you're putting things in your calculator. Awesome. We got four questions left. We don't know now which formula to use, so they're all just mixed in there. So we need to decide which one to use. The way we decide. What is that? On number D. Number we'll, D. Yeah, I say that too. Uh, we'll do those ones together because those ones are tricky. Can we do it if we know? Square root 17. What is the hypotenuse? Nine. It says. <laughs> One, what is it? I can't see it. Which, which one can't you see? Point to what you can't see. Oh, that's just a smudge. It doesn't just a, a smudge on the paper. Okay. We'll do yeah, smudge on the, a smudge on the document. <laughs> we'll do them all together so that you can see the process to go through. C and D are going to require something a little different from us that we're not used to because there's square roots in there. Yeah. So if it's like the square root on the legs, we would just square root that first and then get the answer? Or not like, square root first. Answer, like square root that, that would be the leg, and then we keep the answer. You could, yeah. I'll show you an easier way to do it. But you could do that one. All right. A. The first thing you need to do The first thing you need to do with any question is label the triangle. Labeling the triangle, the longest side has to be C. So in this question, this is C because it's across from the 90. The A and B don't actually matter. I then think it's wise to write on the side of the paper what you know and what you want to know. So for us... A equals 5, B equals 3, C equals question mark, C is what I want to know. That then allows me to pick a formula that makes it a little bit easier for me. Since I'm looking for the hypotenuse, I'm using the A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I'm using the plus one because I want my hypotenuse. If I plug my values in, a was 5, so I have 5 squared, plus B was 3, so I have 3 squared, equals C squared, which I don't know. 
If you put that in your calculator, you should get 25 plus 9, which is going to be 34 equals C squared. Your last step would be to square root. When you square root 34, you get 5.8. The steps you follow for Pythagorean theorem. Label your triangle, pick the right formula, plug it into the formula, make sure you square root. So we live around that uh, it's actually 5.83095. Like it's longer than that. And then I rounded it to be 5.8. That's after I rounded it. Yeah. Good question. If you look at B, the question is just find the missing side. They didn't tell you which formula to use. So your first step is label your triangle properly. To label my triangle properly, C has to be the hypotenuse. The other sides you can call whatever you want. Since I know what my hypotenuse is, I'm going to use the subtraction formula. Another way to do that is to be like, well, I'm looking for one of the legs. So that means I want to use A squared. Give me a second. Computer doesn't like me. A squared equals C squared minus B squared. Right? Because I'm looking for one of my other things. I didn't do it, but it might be wise to write on the side of your paper what you know and what you don't know. If you plug the numbers in, that means A squared would equal 10 squared minus 5 squared. If you put that in your calculator... That means you have a squared equals 75. And then square root both sides to get a equals 8 point something. 8.66, which would change to be 8.7. Right? We round that up because the number next to it was above 5. Five or above. Ow. Awesome. I'll do C with you. I'll show you a trick to dealing with these square root questions. Like not, like, not Possibly. Let's see if you get the right answer. Yeah. If you get the right answer, then your way works. And if you don't, then you got to do it my way. <laughs> if you look at C, the first thing you do is label your triangle. Labeling my triangle. This is C, this is A, this is B. That means I know A equals root 8. I know B equals root 8. I want to know C. This means I can use my formula, A squared plus B squared equals c squared when substituting in with weird values like this you could change those into decimals but there's a much easier way and i think a better way which is to actually just do the substitution so change a to b square root eight like that and it's still squared and i'll show you why this is going to be easier for us rather than converting to decimals. So I'm going to let everyone catch up and substitute those things in. The reason I would prefer you to do it this way is we know the opposite of squaring something is square rooting something. If you look, you have a square on a square root. Square on a square root. Those are opposite effects to each other. That means they just cancel each other out. So instead of dealing with all those decimals, I can just recognize that square root and that squared cancel each other out. And this turns into 8 plus 8 equals C squared, which is a heck of a lot easier than writing out decimals. 8 plus 8 equals 16. 
right? And then if you square root both sides, because that's your last step with Pythagorean theorem always, you get 4 equals C. And it's exactly 4. As long as you use all the decimals, it'll work for you. Well, I didn't use all of them. I kind of did. But like I still don't That's good. Any questions about that? That canceling out effect? Nice. Much better than those decimals. Awesome. Here's D. I want you to try it completely on your own. I will put the work up on the board so you can check to see if you got it right or wrong, and then I will run through it to tell you how it actually worked. The first thing that you do for any of these questions is you label your triangle. I can't, like overstate how important that is to label the triangle properly. Otherwise, you just go the completely wrong direction. So when you're labeling your triangle, figure out where the 90 is. The 90 is here. Across from the 90 is always C. The other two sides really don't matter. I like to call the missing side if it's one of the legs A. So that's just a habit I'm in. If you called it the other way around, that's fine. As long as you recognized you had to do subtraction on this one because you knew the hypotenuse. Know the hypotenuse, subtract to figure out the leg. We did that over here. Um, you should notice that we have that canceling out effect again. So if you have square root of 17 squared, they just cancel out nicely, leaving you with 17. You then go 81 minus 17 to get 64. Your last step is to square root. The square root of 64 is a perfect 8, giving us our side length of 8. Awesome. That's Pythagorean theorem.